What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James 59 Got a really cool tier list for you today. Going to be thinking about the playability of the Civs in the game at the intermediate level. I did a video earlier in the week about the playability of the new Civs. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. And it just got me thinking that it might be nice to put that into context with the other civilizations and talk about kind of where they fit in. And I think this is a worthy question of asking. Now, I want to say that one of the things I'm not asking with this sort of question of playability is not the traditional thing you hear a lot of times where somebody's a beginner and they're trying to figure out what Civ to what Civ to get started with. Uh, that's not really what we're doing as much here because at intermediate level play, this is where the Dark Ages tend to get pretty efficient. The feudal openings tend to get pretty good. The timing is reasonable. And after that, though, particularly when it comes to decision making, and then I think macro as well, sort of that like Castle Age, Imperial Age macro, getting to late game compositions and imp, I think that this is where intermediate level players start to struggle a bit. And so... This is the area that we're gonna be looking at for today's video. And so I'll just say, before I get into some of the basic criteria I'm gonna be looking at, if this kind of video you find it valuable to you, you find it helpful, or heck, you just enjoy listening to the sound of my voice and this sweet music we got here in the background, go ahead, give the video a like, follow the channel. Um, I really like doing these tier lists. With 42 sieves now, they can get a little long, and I don't wanna just give you like a quick 30 second blurb and not, give you the logic that I'm employing for why I'm putting civilizations in certain categories. It's one of the reasons why I actually have these like chill beats going on in the background is because I think it's probably more palatable to, to have a video on play, listen to somebody's voice when you also have some cool beats going on. So, so I am going to try to be as brief as possible, but I also want to give you my thoughts and explanation. And again, hopefully you find that valuable. Now, getting into the criteria in this video, there's a few things that I'm thinking about at the intermediate level. So I mentioned what some of the challenges are for intermediate players. And so the attributes for playability address that. Having passive bonuses, especially ones in Dark Age, these are, these are boost to your collection rate. These are things that maybe you get for free. You don't really have to adjust your build that much, but you can tune your build to go up a little bit faster and it's very easy. Bonuses that you know you're going to get, that's really valuable, right? Uh, bonuses where you really have to adjust your build order, those are, those are a bit more difficult to play at intermediate level because now you're actually having to do very different kind of build orders and you really need to practice with those tips. The other, the couple other things I'd say about this is I think being able to play an aggressive Dark Age strategy is really important for a for playability at the intermediate level, just because again, you are starting to see those really quick openings. And so it's good to be able to not only play a variety of them yourself, depending on the situation, but also being able to defend against them. Also consider here having a flexible tech tree, right? Decision-making, late game comps, I think can be really tough for for intermediate level players. And so being able to have a lot of options that you can get to is really helpful. And also being to mass units throughout the game, that way you don't have to maybe switch as much, right? So being able to mass units easily throughout the game is uh, very important. So with that being said, right, I wanna go ahead, jump into the tier list and uh, limit how much, limit the extent of this preamble. Um, I'm sorry if there's anything else I have to say. Oh, I will say one thing before I just start throwing civilizations in particular categories. I'm not addressing how good the civilizations are. I'm really just, I'm really just looking at how playable they are, how easy they are to play. You'll find civilizations on this list that maybe are in terms of their capabilities better than their playability. And that just means you might need to practice with them a bit more and also vice versa civilizations that are just really, really smooth, but they also may have some weaknesses in terms of their capabilities. So I'll talk about that as we go along. First up on the list is the Aztecs and Aztecs are gonna go into the A tier. So Aztecs get some really nice bonuses in the early game, giving their villagers more carry capacity. It's gonna boost your economy. You are getting your military bonuses uh, with 
with military units being created faster. That's huge. You're getting a little bit extra gold. That's also really helpful. You just have really, really good early game options with the Aztecs. And the thing the civilization does as well is it's a great job of covering its bases. You can counter, if you make eagles, somebody counters with infantry. You can go jaguar warriors and wreck those or even champions of your own. Somebody goes archers to counter that. You have great skirmishers with the atlatl tech. And you also have pretty decent arbalist, right? If you want to play archers, you can just do a lot. Where Aztecs get in the A tier is that I think that like most of the American civilizations, they're just kind of limited in the late game because you lack stable. And I would also say in the mid game as well, because you lack stables, you can't go knights in the mid game and you also can't go hussar raids in the late game. You need to raid with eagles if you want to have mobility and that's often really effective, but it's not a substitute for scouts because you can't just spam them forever. You're kind of on a timer. I'll also say with the Aztecs, you don't get Halbadir. You do get pikemen with Garland Wars, and so you're getting a little bit more attack, but it doesn't quite make up for it. So Aztecs are going to go in the A tier, right? Probably an S tier 7 capability on Arabia, right? Some people... People are kind of on the fence about that, but I think definitely in terms of playability, it's not a, it's not a difficult sieve to play uh, once you kind of figure out how to use eagles. Next up, we have the Bengalis, and I think I gotta put put Bengalis into the D tier, and I'll tell you why. So you have a you have an eco bonus that is passive in that you get two villagers per town center per age up, but and that's actually really nice for your feudal and castle age it's going to keep your dark age pretty generic um and i think it's probably i think trying to modify your build order knowing that you're going to be getting two villagers and eventually kind of be ahead i think it's just a really awkward kind of way to play them and so again i, I just don't think that that's a very i think you probably need to play them pretty vanilla in the dark age and then in castle age you don't have knights you don't have camels in your tech tree at all and that's just pretty unfortunate. You don't get Hussar either, even though you do get fully upgraded Light Cavalry. So you can do some late game raiding with Light Cavalry that's pretty effective. It's just not quite up there with the Hussar sieves. But the real thing that really puts them in D tier is that the power units you really need to go into for this civilization, I'm talking about your Elephant Archers, maybe Battle Elephants, the Ratha as a unique unit, and it's a very unique unit. I, uh, I just did a video about that, and uh, I, can, uh, I, I, I encourage you to check it out. And those units are just ones that are kind of difficult to use. We're still trying to figure out how exactly to use Elephant Archers. The Ratha is a really interesting unit, but it does have a lot of counter units because it's in the Cavalry Archer class. And Battle Elephants are slow, so you kind of got to play them differently. It's just kind of a tricky sieve. You do have Arbalos without Thumb Ring, but again, if you're up against an Archer sieve, you might find yourself a little outclassed. So I think Bengalis are a civilization actually that has a lot of potential. And I think that once people figure out how to play them or where they're strong, I actually think they could be a pretty decent sieve. It's really all about making it to the late game where you can get some good late game comps with them and maybe figuring out how to best incorporate elephant archers. So I think for right now, I'd put them in a D tier. I just think it's a bit tricky to play them based on their mid game tech tree in particular. Next up, we have the Berbers. I'll put Berbers in the B tier. The stable discount's really nice. It's a, it's a fantastic bonus. Again, you're just kind of getting it for free. You probably want to be playing Knights with a Civilization in the mid game. But what keeps them in the B tier is you have the generic Dark Age. You don't have Arbalist, so you really can't invest too deep into the crossbow line. You're probably relying on Camel Archers if you're going for a ranged unit as your as your typical gold unit. And since that's a castle unit, you're gonna have to really try to mass that. And that might take a little bit of time because you're gonna have to get to stone maybe a little bit earlier, or you're gonna be trying to mass it later. And so you might wind up in a situation where you're doing a unit transition and you just don't have the numbers. And you know, high level players might have that down pat. At the intermediate level, I think that I think that that's a little bit more difficult to do. So you probably need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more sort of uh, uh, space to sort of make errors, right? And uh, and and if you're caught by a good player, then you could be in a difficult situation. 
Next up, we have the Bohemians, and I think the Bohemians. Where are the Bohemians? I think that they're D tier for playability, and I'll tell you why. So let me tell you the things I like about them. I love the free mining upgrades. You can find yourself with a lot of stone, a lot of gold. But getting fervor and sanctity, right? You need to make sure you get a monastery beforehand. And they did have their monastery. Uh, their cheap monastery is nerfed. They cost full price now. And you got to pay gold for those techs. I just think it's pretty easy to forget, actually, at an intermediate level. When you're usually relying a lot more on, like, muscle memory and things you've done before. They have bad cavalry. Their Arbalists don't have Thumb Ring. They, I don't even think they get Cavalry Archers. So you have a lot of units that you just really can't play. I think that you're often really funneled into playing Crossbows with Chemistry and Castle Age that are very, very strong, even though you lack Thumb Ring. But what's tricky is that you have to get a market. You have to research Chemistry, which is pretty pricey in, as, at that era in the game. And it takes a while to research too. So again, you might find yourself waiting for a power spike to come and you, by the time it gets there, you don't have any army left. I also think the trash monks are really, really interesting with this civilization, but that I just think it's as an intermediate player, you've probably never really done that or at least not done it very much because you're probably playing a lot of Arabia, you know? And so, you know, and I don't want to suggest that everybody plays Arabia, but even on arena, you've never done that strategy before. Right? because nobody's ever had trash monks so regardless of what kind of map you play whether it's you know kind of one of the three you know arabia arena nomad open close and then the town center will start whatever you're playing you probably don't have that much experience with trash monks and how to use them in the late game so i think bohemians can be a really strong civ but unfortunately i think it's a d tier in terms of intermediate level playability now next up we have the britons and for me I think Britons have to go into the S tier. You have a great eco bonus in Dark Age that can allow you to play aggressively and also in the mid game that can allow you to boom and also make military at the same time. Your Arbalist are great. Your, the Longbowman at the castle, if you find, find yourself needing a substitute for Arbalist is great, but Arbalist will really, they can win the day. And with Britons, you also have pretty reasonable trash units in that your skirmishers are really good because they can get extra range. They're only missing thumb ring. Your halberdiers are fully upgraded. Your trash killer, the champion, is fully upgraded. And your your light cavalry line, you're missing hussar and bloodlines, but that's it. And so light cavalry actually can be really strong because you get that last armor upgrade. So I just think Britons are a civilization where it's really smooth because you know the unit you want to play into, and it's so good it's hard for other players to stop. And so what you're really trying to do with the civilization is just figuring out what's going to be your trash unit that you're going to have with that unit, right? Or if you're going to play a double gold comp, again, you're just probably playing knights anyways or maybe champions. So Burton's, I just think, are really, really simplified to play. And so that earns them a spot in the S tier. Now, next up, we have the, the Bulgarians. Oh, Bulgarians. I think Bulgarians, for me... I think I got to put them in the C tier. Let me think. Yeah, I think I got to put them in the C tier. So you have, again, thinking about that aggressive play, you can play very, very aggressive with Bulgarians. The blacksmith bonuses that they work faster and the, the upgrades cost minus 50% food lets you transition between units really well. And you also have a nice units from basically each military building. So at the barracks, you have really good two-handed swords that you're getting for free. That's also a really nice bonus. Halberdiers, you have really good knights. You have really good hussar. You actually have heavy cavalry archers, even into the late game, that in terms of performance are the same as Huns. You're just not getting the cost bonuses. But again, it's pretty easy to get into them in Castle Age because... The blacksmith upgrades are so much cheaper. Your siege upgrades are also cheaper as well. And so that's one of the things that can be a struggle with siege is actually just affording the upgrades. Being able to take that food cost down is so useful for Bulgarians. The reason though that they wind up in C tier is just they lack crossbow. And that means that oftentimes in feudal age, you're going to feel really guilty or anxious about playing in archers because you're always going to be worried about over-investing in them. And so 
Oftentimes you might need to feel in feudal age, you got to play scouts or skirms. And basically with Bulgarians, your feudal age is just kind of weak because you probably aren't going to want to mass archers. And archers in the crossbow meta is just very common in the game right now, even at an intermediate level. And so that's going to boot them all the way down to C tier. Next up, we have the Burgundians, and Burgundians are going to keep us in the C tier, actually. So, you have great eco, but you got a budget for it. You have an insane late game, but again, it just doesn't fit with this aggressive rushing style play that you often see at intermediate levels. And so, you might wind find you might wind up finding yourself on the back foot a bit often with this sieve, having to play things like Cavaliers without bloodlines. Again, you might be waiting. That's a, an upgrade that takes a long time to research. You might be waiting on that power spike to really kick in. And again, it's really only giving you plus two attack over knights. It's still countered by all the same things, pikemen, monks. So again, I just think it's kind of difficult to play. This is a great example of a civilization I feel like that in the hands of a high level player with that eco can be top level capability, honestly. But at an intermediate level play, I think it's probably more of a struggle. Next up, we have Burmese. I think Burmese belong in the B tier as well. A lot right, right on the Berbers. The wood chopping upgrades, that's a good passive bonus. Let's you invest resources elsewhere. You have strong feudal openings. Seeing the relics as a team bonus is really nice, actually, because it can kind of indirectly help you determine where your opponent is. The reason Burmese are in the B tier is just they really struggle against archers because they miss the second archer armor upgrade. And so in order to deal with archers, you really just can't go skirmishers, and you probably can't go crossbows yourself, which again is a really common strategy. You're really forced to do other things and kind of play differently, whether you go for elephants that actually have extra pierce armor, or mana per cavalry to be doing extra bonus damage against archers. You just have to play them kind of differently, and again, I think that that's something that makes them a bit more difficult to play, but really strong openings with the Civ. Next up, we have the Byzantines, and I'm going to put the Byzantines in the A tier. You have a really flexible tech tree. You have cheap counter units that can help you deal with aggression. You have a really cheap Imperial Age upgrade. I think that for intermediate players, that sometimes is a little bit of a curse because often you might want to go for a strategy, but you click up too early. That means, especially if you're playing like only like on like one or two TCs, you might get to Imperial Age and not have the eco that you expect. And so you're kind of getting to Imperial Age, but not able to use it. So I think you got to think about that. But the other thing that's going to keep them really in the A tier is just that your Dark, your dark Age is really generic. I do think that that's countered a bit by the fact that your cheaper spearmen and skirmishers the fact that you have that enables you to help battle back aggression but again it just means that you have to play a bit more of a reactive play style and you might not be used to that so i think byzantines they're pretty flexible i think they're pretty playable and they're just they are a pretty smooth sieve to play so not quite s tier because they just don't have they just don't have the ability to fit into the more aggressive rushing meta i think that you see at a mid elo level Next up, we have the Celts, and Celts I'm going to put in the B tier. So, the thing with Celts is that you have a really nice opening with the wood chopping upgrade. You can play fast archers if you want. You can play a little bit quicker men-at-arms, which is also cool. And you also have a really nice late game, but your mid game is really strange because your archers fall off a cliff in terms of capability and your knights still get bloodlines so you're gonna lose knight versus knight battles and so your mid game is so awkward that to me i think if you can survive the mid game and get to the end that's pretty strong but it can be kind of hard to do with kilts next up we have the chinese i'm gonna put the chinese in the c tier i know the chinese have a really really unusual start I'm kind of assuming at this point that intermediate level players have some idea how to deal with it, but that they just haven't really optimized it. And and Chinese have a notoriously low win rate at the low to mid elo level, so it makes sense that they're the word starts throwing people off. But even if you're not optimizing it, you can still usually compete in terms of times. And the thing with Chinese is once you get out of the dark age, 
the rest of the game, even Feudal Age, it's just so fantastic because you get the cheaper technologies and that's helping you out a lot. You have a very, very flexible tech tree. Again, I think the start, like if, if you had a if you had a generic start with a civilization, I think it's easily like A tier in terms of playability. So the start really does bring the civilization down quite a bit, but it's so flexible and you have so many options once you get out of the Dark Age and into like mid feudal age. I, I think that it's definitely better than those D tier sits. Next up we have humans. Humans are so tough. I'm gonna put them B. Just because the thing with humans is that I think the two town center start might be difficult to optimize if you're playing that as an intermediate player. However, you have cheaper archery ranges and cheaper stables. And so if you do want to open more aggressively, you can do that because you don't need as much wood going up. If you want to just pocket that wood, you can do that too. I just think it's a really, it's a sieve that's pretty unique in that way. And you're saving the wood and you're probably putting up a range or a stable once you get to Feudal Age anyways, if you're playing, if you're going to do some fighting in Feudal Age. So it's just really nice here. You're getting that basically for free. I think it's a B tier because it's just, it's a bit tougher to op optimize that two town center opening at an intermediate level. And so that can be kind of a challenge. You might actually wind up finding yourself in Castle Age getting pushed because you have too much idle time or something like that. So I'll give it a B, but it's, it's it has, it has, it's more than just a two town center play sieve in, in Feudal Age. Next up we have the Dravidians, and unfortunately, I think I gotta put the Dravidians in the the D tier. And it's kind of the polar opposite of the Bengalis. You have great openings in Feudal Age, you can get up aggressively, you have nice men at arms, nice archers, your scouts are terrible, but you have the you can open something like 19 pop scouts if that's the situation calls for it. The thing about Dravidians is once you get to Castle Age, things get awkward. If you're not playing into crossbows and you're deciding to play elephant archers, again, a unit that you don't have a lot of experience with, can be kind of tricky to figure out. And you're lacking bloodlines and husbandry with Dravidians. I don't think that bloodlines is quite as big of a deal as missing husbandry. So because your elephant archers are going to be really slow, but they're still going to have a lot of HP even without bloodlines. And then Imperial Age, the civilization, I just feel like it's so underpowered at this point. So with Dravidians, you're really playing in the early game. And so I think I got to give them, though, a D overall, just because of how limited their tech tree is once you get to the mid game. And, and, and it just gets worse beyond. Next up are the Ethiopians. Ethiopians, right? I got to give them an A here. It's just a really strong sieve. You get a nice, you know, nice ego bonus. And that's good for for early feudal, early castle age. It can get a bit awkward late because your cavalry is not that great. So you always got to think of that's kind of the civilization's weakness is bad cavalry. Your barracks, you do get the pipeline upgrade for free. That's really smooth. And your swordsman line's bad, but you can't make chateau warriors. You know, I just think you know the unit you want to play with the sieve. You want to get an arbalist. You want to stay an arbalist. Getting free pikemen helps you do that. Giving good siege helps you, you know, get to a good late game comp. So, Ethiopians, I think I'll give them an A tier. Next up, we have the Franks. And Franks, to me, run alongside Britons. Two classic Civ. Easy S tier. The forging bonus, getting getting rid of the berries faster. Consuming those is great. And it also allows you to reallocate those villagers elsewhere faster. Free farming upgrades is great. Really helps you get into knights. And it saves you some... Nice food early to help you make scouts. You have great knights. You have other units that round out the civilization, like throwing axemen from your cheaper castles, fully upgraded halves, champions. Uh, you know, your light cavalry tapers off later, but your scouts are pretty strong in Feudal Age because they, by, by virtue of their 20% more HP, they're gonna have a little bit more. Not as much as if they have bloodlines, but still you're getting that as soon as you age up. It's pretty nice, Franks to me is an easy S tier for playability, right? It's one of the civilizations that a lot of times people like to learn on. And I think that just says something about how smooth the civilization is in general. Because so we have the Goths and I think Goths are also a D tier in terms of playability. The thing you gotta remember about Goths, I think though, is that they are a bit, they have probably more of an open tech tree than you realize. 
right? They get fully upgraded Castle Age Knights. They do have Bracer. Their Skirmishers are really only missing Thumb Ring. You have Bombard Cannons and Hand Cannoneers. It's, it's, you have things with Goths. The problem is that you just... It often feels like you need to play in strange ways with them early to take advantage of the infantry bonus being cheaper and the faster producing barracks. And it just feels like you got to play them a little odd to make use of that because the power spike from men at arms and early feudal age falls off as soon as, you know, two or three archers get on the field. So I think with Goss, you can be a little bit predictable in that way. And also Goths get Hussar dismissing the last armor upgrade. I'll say that as well. The thing with Goths I think that's really strange is that you're really funneled into a late game infantry comp of something like Huskarls or Champions with Halberdiers. And even though you have some options you can transition into, because you don't have an eco bonus, I think it's just kind of hard to make some of those transitions into things you're not used to playing with Goths. And so I think you can feel like you're just a little underpowered because it's just kind of hard to get to some of the Goths' other options. So to me, that's enough to put them into the D tier. Next up, we have the Gurjaras. And so I want to put Gurjaras in the C tier. I think that it's, they're kind of, to me, in terms of thinking about them, it's, they actually profile to me a lot like Chinese. And uh, I think it's a really strong civilization capability-wise. The start is a little weird because you have forge bushes and you can you really need to garrison sheep inside the mill. So you got to do things a little bit differently. I actually think that's not the weirdest thing. The weirdest thing with the civilization is actually deciding when to take the sheep. I think what a lot of people do is take the sheep kind of maybe late dark age during the transition into feudal age. And you're going to be saving a lot of wood, which is really, really good. But... The problem is like you're scouting at that time. You may be dealing with an opening from your opponent doing uh, doing something like men-at-arms or scouts. And so I just think having, trying to optimize the civilization and ungarrison sheep to go to the town center and not have any idle time there, I think it'd just be really awkward with Gujaras. And so I think that it's kind of like Chinese. I think once you practice the start a little bit, even just a few times, I think it helps out a lot, but it's just kind of awkward. Where Gujaras really shine I think is once you kind of get it really just once you get out of dark age and once you really get your economy going because you have so many unique units the camel scout I think is fantastic um really really strong unit you start with one and so your scout rush is really good you can get fast archery range up as well if you want to play archer so you can play all those aggressive strats which is something with chinese that it's a little bit harder to do gorjaras can easily do something like 19 pop scouts or like 19 pop archers um i prefer i like 20 pop a little bit better because i prefer a little bit more eco with that but hey you know to each their own and in the mid game you have really great camels that you can mass during the transition to castle age you have the Shravamsha Rider, which is a unit that's, unit that's really growing on me um i think you have to really commit to it to make it work so you kind of got to play around with it. And again, that's going to lower the playability a bit. But I think it's really strong. The Shockham Thrower from the castle. It's just kind of like a better Gabedo in my view, honestly. That's really strong. You can get really cheap food units once you get their Castle Age tech. It's just a strong civilization with a lot of options. Fully upgraded crossbows in Castle Age are really nice too. You can stay on crossbows for a little bit longer than you otherwise might. So it's just a good civilization all around, honestly. But the weird start to me is going to put it in C tier. But don't be afraid. I would say practice with them and don't be afraid to use them. I think you'll you find you'll be able to win a lot of games if you can get their start down. Next up, we have the Hindustanis. Hindustanis to me are definitely an A tier. Close to S. I think that just the cheaper villagers is such a great, such a great bonus. That allows you to play basically any aggressive strategy you want. You have a counter unit for basically everything. Camels against cavalry. Ghulam against archers. Super hand cannoneers against any kind of infantry. It's really just about getting them. But you have the civ you have, probably have the eco to do it with this civilization. I think that would be the only problem with Hindustanis. Is you just don't get any knights. And I think that that's tough in the mid game. Because it's a bit harder to raid your opponent in games in Castle Age. It feels like with Hindustani, you're the winning games early, 
or you're having to play some kind of like maybe in castle age maybe you could win it with forward siege or you're trying to end it late so i think it's a good sieve really good really, really i think in terms of capability it's easily an s tier i think there's a playability lacking knights matters because it's just such an important part of the game speaking of knight sieves right talk about the huns huns have really nice knights and they're also going to go in the a tier um, not needing any houses makes them play really, really smooth. Um, you know, you might act, try to make houses at the start and have a little bit of idle, t idle villager time because of that. And so watch out for that. And I think in general, the civilization has a lot of options, really strong, really strong cavalry, really strong cavalry archers with the bonus, right? There's going to be the, and the bonus being their civilization discount. You just where you're a little bit weaker is at the barracks and i think that with the huns the reason they're not s tier is you just run into some bad matchups where i think camel civilizations ones maybe with stronger ca like tatters or magyars can be trouble i think the american civilizations can be a lot of trouble if you get into a late game where it's something like a pike eagle comp uh, combination in castle age if you have enough knights you might be able to fight that off but depending on how late that goes that can get kind of tricky with Huns as the game gets later. So that, to me, makes me want to put them into the A tier. Next up, we have the Incas. I think Incas are putting A and B, but I'll put them in B. You get a nice little small eco bonuses. You know, free llama, houses giving you double pop. You know, some nice stone discount on buildings that cost stone. It's pretty nice. And you just have so many counters for pretty much everything. I, I think Incas are... I'd, I'd be willing to say that they're kind of underrated. I feel like they don't get they don't get talked about as much. I think it's the counter unit play, which is really important for 1v1. But I think that, that does, there's two things with the Incas that cause me to put them into B tier. One, I think that because they have so many counter units, you often might feel like you need to react to everything. And you kind of have to you play units that you're not familiar with, maybe like the Kamiak or the Slinger, to try to deal with your counters. And again, similar to all the American civs, you're just missing scouts. And missing scouts is huge. It's an opening you can't do. It's a strategy you can't do late. I think that matters a lot, actually. And so I think the American civs in general are just a little bit harder to play, but they all are more capable than their playability suggests. So practice with them. Next up, we have the Italians. I like Italians in the B tier as well, actually. I think the cheaper... The cheaper up bonus is nice if you just want to pocket the resources. I think you kind of have to modify your build, though, to to play with it. And so that can be kind of tricky. You do have a fairly open tech tree, but no halberdiers is a bit awkward. And I think getting the Genoese crossbowmen, again, it's a good unit. But anytime you're relying on a unit from the castle, I think it just makes life a little bit tougher on you. Now next up we have the Japanese, and this may surprise you, but I'm actually going to put Japanese in the S tier in terms of playability, right? This might be my big controversial pick, but hear me out here. You have a really, really, really nice passive early game bonus that allows you to do pretty much any aggressive feudal strategy. You have fully upgraded Knights and Light Cav in Castle Age when you get to the mid game. You have a great Barracks. You have a great archery range. Your stable is decent. It's really only in Imperial Age when you got to think to yourself, hmm, maybe not invest too much into those Cavaliers because you're missing the lost armor upgrade. And since your light cavalry get bloodlines, even though you're missing that last armor upgrade, your light cavalry are still not bad. I might not throw them up against Ethiopian Arbalist, but as a raiding unit, they're pretty capable, right? They're just not going to be a strong rating unit. They're going to be a kind of a mediocre one, but I think that they get the job done. With Japanese, you just have a lot of diversity in terms of counters. Your skirmishers are fully upgraded. You have probably top three halberdiers. I mentioned the light cav already. You have fully upgraded heavy cav archer, which very few civilizations get. Fully upgraded arbalist, right? On hybrid maps, you have fishing ships that really can enable you to get a great eco. With the civilization, you have a lot of best units, maybe best champions, maybe best helps, probably the best towers. Uh, you know, and I mentioned all the other things you have. You have hand cannoneers as well. The, with the Japanese, the, really what you're missing is some siege options. But hey, if you get Kataparuto in the late game, your trebuchets fire and unpack with lightning speed. So, you know, maybe remind yourself to get that tech. But I just feel like you have a lot of options with the sieve. 
It's no wonder that people like Spirit of the Law have championed it. And so this to me, right, it's one of my favorite civilizations too. And I hope I'm not being biased just because I play them a decent bit. But I really think that the civilization, I think it's well known for its strong early game. I do think that it has a weakness of maybe getting tapering off a little bit later. But again, I actually think, right, with fully upgraded Arbalest, fully upgraded Heavy Cavalry Archers, there's still a lot of options that you can play for. So I would contrast it with a Civ like Dravidians, which I feel like has a similar early game, but not a lot of options later on. I think Japanese, you know, maybe if you're on a closed map where you need like things like Siege Onagers, uh, stuff like that, I think Japanese could be a bit of a struggle. But I think on most maps, hybrid, open, again, you can just play them in so many different areas and they're, they're a go-to pick on hybrid. You see them on Arabia a decent bit in tournaments, especially with really good pro players like Leary playing them uh, very commonly. I just think it's a great sieve and easy to play. Next up we have Khmer. Oh, Khmer. I think Khmer, I think Khmer have to go to the C tier. So you get great bonuses with the sieve, but you really got to modify your builds to squeeze the juice out of it, right? Not needing buildings to go up is... Well, you know, that's, you really, you really got to modify your build. What can I say? And if you're playing scouts, right? And if you don't have a barracks, that gets really tough. Uh, the farming eco is a nice passive bonus though. You have a decent tech tree, but you do have some limitations there. Your halves not so good. You don't have bombard cannons anymore. I just think it's got to be a C tier. Next up we have Koreans. I'll put Koreans in the D tier actually. I think they're pretty awkward to play. You have bad cavalry. Your infantry is missing blast furnace. It's kind of meh. Um, it's really tough to play aggressively with them unless you're going for a tower rush, which you probably haven't done since Vubly or HD. So yeah, it's just tough. I mean, there's things to like about the Civ. Getting the free archer armor upgrades is good. The War Wagon is an insane unique unit if you can get to it, but there's just not a lot of options there, I think, for them. So to me, it's an easy D tier. Now, Lithuanians for me... I, I think Lithuanians are probably an S tier Civ. I think their eco bonus early on just allows them to be one of the most aggressive civilizations in the game. You have a nice tech tree, you have nice knights, nice scout line, fully upgraded crossbows. Your heavy cav archers are pretty good, really only missing Parthian tactics. You have hand cannoneers, you have nice siege. You have probably some of the best trash units in the game. It just feels like you have so many options with the civilization. You have a unique unit that is actually really cheap for its abilities. I just, I just see S, the Civ as S tier Civ all over it. Uh, you can really do everything well. The only thing you might struggle with is a bit of range. And that's really only going to be an Imperial Age. So, and even then, you can play Cav Archers if you want. So, you know, yeah, it's just a great Civ. Next up, we have the Magyars and the Magyars. I'm going to put Magyars in the A Civ. Uh, the A tier, excuse me. I actually think in terms of like low elo, if you're trying to find a sieve to begin with, I think Magyars are great for beginners because this is part of the reason why they run it up in the A tier here. Their Dark Age is generic. And so you can kind of just learn builds, but you have such a flexible tech tree. And with Magyars, you really kind of have a U-shaped uh, sort of graph here. You have a really, really strong early feudal age with cheaper blacks, with, excuse me, with free blacksmith upgrades and cheaper scouts. And archers that have extra line of sight so you can see a bit more. Helps you get some more information. And then in the late game, Mag, your late game is so strong. Uh, you know, whether you're going to full upgraded Arbalist, full upgraded Heavy Cav Archers with a Recurve Bow, Paladins, it's insane. Uh, it's just in the mid game. I think you're a little bit weaker, though. You do have a power spike from getting uh, the second attack upgrade with Knights. That can be really good. So, I think don't sleep on their mid game because since you get fully upgraded Arbalist, right? It's the only Civ to get fully upgraded Arbalist and fully upgraded Paladin. And oh yeah, they also get fully upgraded Heavy Cav Archers with an extra tech. I mean, this civilization has just one of the best militaries in the game. And so, depending on your play style, I think, honestly, I think this could be an S tier Civ if you're a really opportunistic style of player. But I think because of the generic Dark Age, 
unless you're opening scouts, your men at arms rush, your archers should be pretty vanilla. So I think that's enough to boot it down to A tier, but still really good. And so we have the Malay, Malay or D tier. The age up bonus, I think, is really tricky for new players. And it's going to happen with each age up. So it's not just an early game thing. Your tech tree is pretty limited as well. So that's that's got D tier written all over it for me. Next up, we have the Malians. Malians, I'll go A tier as well. You have a pretty open tech tree, some passive bonuses with cheaper buildings, more gold. I think that with Malians, where you run into an awkward transition is going to Imperial Age because you don't get Bracer. You do get Arbalist, which is kind of strange. And you don't get Halberdier, but you have Pikemen with more Pierce armor. You have the Champ Scarls, champions with more melee armor. I think that you have to play the Civ kind of weird in Imperial Age because you don't get Blast Furnace, but you get Faremba. It's an awkward, it's an awkward Imperial Age transition, but if you could make it, it's really strong. All right, next up we have the Mayans, and I'm going to put Mayans in the B tier, right? Um, so here's the thing with Mayans. I mean, first of all, they're, they're one of the strongest civilizations in the game, right? Capability-wise, you have a pretty nice opening, but... There's just some really, really bad matchups with the civilization. You have bad swordsmen, right? Only getting two-handed swordsmen. You don't get stables, so you can't go scouts. You're just kind of funneled into certain unit comps. Now, Mayans are one of those civilizations in the hands of a high-level player. They're just so strong eco-wise, and their units are so powerful that a lot of times, really high-level players just brute force it. It's kind of like Britons. Like, you kind of know what's coming, but the Mayans are just too good for you to be able to stop it, right? Um, so you could run into situations like that, but if you run up against some of those civilizations, like Goths, for instance, are a really gnarly matchup. I think Hindustanis now with the Gulam might be a pretty tough matchup. It remains to be like Gul Gulam hand cannoneer seems to counter anything that Mayans can do late game. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that Mayans just have some bad matchups. And so that's why I put them in the B tier. All right, next up we have the Mongols. So they're A or B tier. I'm gonna put them in the A tier, and here's why. I think the faster hunt bonus is nice for the boar, but it is gonna you're just gonna have more food than you think, and so you're gonna have to figure out how many villagers if you're gonna play them aggressively. With the Mongols, you definitely want to. You're really, in order to optimize them, you really need to push in deer, which a lot of people are doing at an intermediate level, but people aren't necessarily doing it well. And so, and you're probably not pushing in all of your deer, probably usually only one, and because scouting is so important. And so, I think Mongols, right, you know, can be kind of tricky to play in that way. But I think, and I think that their feudal age is a little is a little vanilla as well. But the thing about the Mongols is they have a really great diversity in the mid game, whether you want to play knights or camels. Step lancers with Mongols have more HP. That's really nice. Light cavalry have more HP. Again, nice unit. And then in Imperial Age, you have win conditions with getting to the Mangadai. Again, getting to Mangadai is, is something you probably want to do in most cases. And you're relying on that from the castle. I mean, it's worth noting the Civ does have Arbalus that only lack the last armor upgrade. So if you want to play Arbalest Hussar with the Civ, it's actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. And I've definitely done that a lot with Mongols. I, I think it's kind of an underrated strategy for them. But so you can do that. So you have that option. But yeah, but you know, but but you're probably going to want to get to Mangadai. So we have the Persians. Persians, Persians, Persians. I think Persians are kind of tough. I'm looking for where I have my notes on them. Well, I think Persians probably belong in, I think they probably belong in B tier. You have a, you have kind of a nice opening with a little bit of extra resources. You get to Feudal Age, your Town Center works faster, so that can be a bit nicer though. It can strain your eco a bit in early Feudal Age. You have a really nice stable with this civilization. Your foot archers are not bad because you're really just missing Arbalist and Bracer in late game. And the fact that you can make them their trash units is really good. And so you can get some pretty cost-effective late game comps with them. 
your swordsman line is really weak, only getting long swords, but your halberdiers are fully upgraded. You get bombard cannons. I think Persians have a lot of nice options, actually. Next up, we have the poles. I'm going to slide poles also into the B tier. So, you have nice options at a lot of different ages. Poles are kind of like goths, but for cavalry, you get really cheap knights. But the thing with poles, though, you have foot archers that, again, you have arbalists without the lust armor upgrade. Really nice. The obu is a good unit. I think the thing with poles that's a bit tricky is that in feudal age, playing defense with poles can be really tough because defending full works can be difficult. And I think your dark age is a... It's not quite generic because of the full work, but... You're really, with this civilization, counting on that food production coming in in Feudal Age. I just think it could be a hard civilization to play with in Feudal. But once you get later into the game, I think it just gets even stronger. Next up, we have Portuguese. And Portuguese is going to keep us in the B tier. The gold cost is, to cheaper gold cost is great. You have a nice late game. I just think it's really tough to compete with aggressive strategies. Flat out. That, that's, that's part of the problem. Next up is Saracens. I think I'll keep Saracens. We're just still just riding out the B tier. Uh, you have a really open tech tree, which is nice. And the using the market, I think, can be a bit difficult. But I will say that because the markets are cheaper, you don't have to invest a lot of resources to get to the markets. And, you know, at this point, you're kind of just clicking on buttons. It's really about knowing how to allocate your villagers to, to use the market. So... I think it takes a little bit of work to get the market abuse down. I have a nice build order where I do that in a team game. I highly recommend you check it out. I know that from people in the comment section, they've found that build to be useful. And the thing with Saracens to me that keeps them from getting in the A tier is you don't have Halberdier, right? So you're pretty reliant on uh, camels for and Mamelukes for anti-cavalry. All right, next up we have the Sicilians. And Sicilians to me, they're a C tier sieve. I think the tech tree is surprisingly open for the most part. Getting Arbalist with a thumb ring. Pretty strong Cavalier that can get eight Pierce armor. Good Lord. In the late game. That's been made a bit more expensive now. Yeah, full upgraded Light Cab. You just have a lot of options. And being able to absorb bonus damage really helps. I think making Town Centers faster is nice. It kind of forces you into a boom, though, to take advantage of their that Dark Age bonus. But getting Horse Caller... So you have faster working farms, assuming fa longer lasting farms. Um, well, that's the thing with Sicilians. You generally don't do that with Sicilian with a sieve. If you're playing archers, you usually try to get your wood shopping upgrade first. But actually, with Sicilians, you probably want to get horse collar first. And again, that makes them kind of awkward, right? Poles are kind of the same way with the full work and the bonus that it creates. So I think Sicilians, though, the difference here is that. Whereas poles have a lot more bonuses that are like kind of helping you passively, like stone miners being able to generate gold. With Sicilians, you really have to play into town centers to do that. And so I think it makes them a bit less playable at an intermediate level, but it's still a great civilization. Next up, we have the Slavs, and the Slavs will keep us in the C tier. I just think that you have limited range units. It's more of an infantry sieve later on, and that can be kind of tougher to play into and transition into. The farming bonus is really nice, but the Dark Age is also kind of generic, so it's just kind of a tricky sieve. But it's a strong sieve if you can get there. All right, we have the Spanish now, and Spanish for me, they're an easy, easy D tier. You have really no good eco bonuses. You don't have crossbow. The tech tree is pretty open, but it kind of forces you into playing conquistadors or knights. And again, the eco bonus is to get there. Look, I actually think Spanish are kind of underrated in terms of capability. I love the blacksmith upgrades not costing gold. I often find I have all this gold left over and I can spend it on, you know, making more knights or maybe trying to go like, you know, triple stable knights as an opening. But again, you don't really have a good food bonus to pull that off. So maybe you can make more farms. Again, it's one of these civilizations that you kind of got to tweak a bit. But it's really the no crossbow play that I think makes it not as good and comparing it to a civ like bulgarians who also don't have crossbow the thing with bulgarians is that you can play really really aggressively with the fastest men at arms rush in the game spanish you're still kind of generic so unfortunately i think that will make the difference and put them in the d tier 
All right, next up we have the Tatars. Tatars are interesting. I think that they kind of got to go in the C tier. So the sheep bonus with them lasting longer is really good, but it's not helping you get up earlier as much as that it's making food last longer, which again is compares with the Gurjaras and is different than the Britain say where you're just getting in that food much faster. And that's what makes the Britain sheep bonus so strong. It's also the case with Tatars that you don't have Arbalist, so, but you do get free thumb rings. So you really do want to like, there really is a lot of incentive to play into early Castle Age crossbow and then try to transition out of it. But again, that transition can be tough. Your barracks is pretty terrible, though you do get halberdiers. You're missing even the second infantry armor upgrade. So your infantry is just going to be awful. You have some limitations with Tatars, but you also have a lot of good things going for you as well. So again, I think it's a strong sieve, but I think to play it, you got to practice it a bit. It's not the easiest sieve in the world to play to me. All right, next up we have the, t the Teuton. I think Teutons are a D tier for playability. So your Dark Age is going to be pretty generic with the Civ um, because you're probably not putting a lot of farms down there. Your farms are cheaper. That's a really nice wood saving bonus. That's really helping you in like the, you know, really like the early, early to mid game. And then from there beyond, I mean, Teutons have a nice economy, actually. The real thing with Teutons, though is that their range is bad and even their cavalry is slow. And so with Teutons, you just wind up in situations where I think even if you go knights with them, it can just be really hard to dictate fights. And I just think <sighs> Teutons seem like they have a major weakness to range units. I would say especially cavalry archers. They seem really weak to cavalry archers to me, but really any range unit, I would say. And so I just think they're kind of a tough sieve. They're just a really slow sieve. And I think that can be difficult. Next up, we have the Turks. Turks are also going to go in the D tier. Lacking trash units is weird. But then you have the great Hussars. You don't have Arbalus. You don't have Paladin. You know, I don't think you get Onagers either. So you have a lot of limitations with the sieve. Again, I think Turks are great. Heavy Cavalry or Hussar is, with Turks, is just a sign of beauty. Uh, Janissaries are super interesting if you can learn how to play them. But... I think missing all the trash units makes them really tough for most intermediate players to play. Who, who Where you often have to be bailed out by making trash units and bailed out of bad situations. Next up, I say the Vietnamese. It's either A or B. I actually think Vietnamese are probably an A tier. I have B in my notes, but hear me out. I think you have nice eco in the early game because you have the economic upgrades that don't cost wood so that's really going to help you get out your archers the fact that you know where your opponent's base starts from means that you can kind of track down their units a bit easier because you have a sense of the direction they're going to come from and that's really good for early game scouting vietnamese are a classic sieve that's great at laming as well and you have a really, you have a surprisingly flexible tech tree with some power units too. Your cavalry line gets all of the armor upgrades. You're really missing blast furnace, right? So you have light cav uh, with no blast furnace. It's still a nice raiding option though. Decent, which means you have decent knights. You have pretty strong cavalry archers because of extra HP. You have really strong foot archers, probably the strongest skirmishers in the game. You have Bombard Cannons, Bombard Towers. I mean, you just get a lot with the sieve, and as you're getting those eco upgrades, saving that wood is really nice. So, I put Vietnamese as an A tier sieve. I think it's really good. Next up, we have the Vikings. So, I'm going to put Vikings at C tier for intermediate players. Now, remember, Viking economy in the hands of a high level player could in terms of the capabilities of the sieve is fantastic but most of the people watching this video are not higher level players and so here's sort of the warning against vikings right despite your obviously great eco bonus with free wheelbarrow free handcart you have a very generic dark age you have a limited tech tree as the game goes on 
even your crossbow line isn't fully upgraded, your cavalry is awful, you really are dependent on infantry later on. And I think that just makes them difficult to play. With Vikings, you're very much on a timer. And if you were a high-level player who's more efficient, you might be able to close games out a bit earlier. But, right, you're probably going to struggle a little bit more with that. And I think it just makes Vikings a bit more difficult to play. Despite the really lovely eco bonus, their men-at-arms rush is not bad. But having more HP on men-at-arms... I really doesn't think it doesn't rescue them from somebody who's playing like a 20 pop archer defense because you know they're gonna have archers out and maybe fast fletching or something and all of a sudden your men at arms are still gonna go down pretty hard uh trying to break into these you know walled in wood lines and stuff like that so I just think it's tough and I would give them a C but know that Vikings have a lot of capability in their eco so if you can just master them then you can take that civilization. Might be a little bit tougher to play later on, and you're gonna make it a really strong one. And I think that that's true for for a lot of these civilizations to uh, probably to lesser degrees. And so that's the tier list, y'all. Um, it's gone on a little bit long, so I'm really gonna try and end it here. But again, 42 civs now. This is just where we're at with these tier lists. Um, I hope that the the rationale that I've given for for the civs i hope it's helpful i hope it helps you understand the civilizations better and for me that's worth it to do a tier list that goes on for you know plus 50 minutes um I remember it's taking you 50 minutes to listen and i spend 50 minutes talking about it in addition to taking notes and prepping as well so again um, if you appreciate all that please go ahead like the video subscribe to the channel and that way i know that you like this kind of content and i'm happy to do more of it because i like talking about the sieve anyways it's not a it's not a burden on me i just uh, really want to make sure that you all enjoy this kind of thing so with that being said i'm jim james 59 and i'll see y'all out there on the ladder peace